There are two kinds of people in this world. Those that know about secondary dominance, and those that do not. This video will be a revelation for the uninformed, and for those already aware, an exploration of deeper truths. Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and whether or not you've heard of secondary dominance before, Today, I'm going to be explaining them in a way that makes so much more sense. And if you already kind of understand what's going on, I'm also going to show five variations and spin-offs of secondary dominance that will add so much color and depth to your music. You know, when I was about 14 years old, I remember sitting in my living room watching Saturday Night Live. And at the very end of the show, the SNL band came in for that closing theme, and I heard six chords that forever changed my ears and my life. And I'll play a shortened version of what that sounded like. One, two, three, four, five, six. When I heard those chords, I got off the couch, went to the piano, and tried to figure out what I had just heard, and I couldn't do it. And that's because the chords in that progression were not in the key. Now, some people call them non-diatonic chords. Some people call it a borrowed chord or modal mixture or a secondary dominant. But really, it's just a chord that's not in the key. And the way that I'm going to talk about these chords today is five of X. Five of X. I'll explain what that means. And we're going to break down the first part of that progression. So we have a C major going to an E7 going to an A minor. The E7 is the five of A minor. Five of X. X is any chord you wanna to go to. That's what we have going on here. Doesn't matter if the chord doesn't belong to the key. E7 doesn't belong to the key of C major, but it does lead beautifully into an A minor. Let's do another example. We're gonna start on C major again, and we're gonna land on E minor. Now, how do we get to the E minor? via this secondary dominant? Well, let's just call it five of X. What is the five of E? We're gonna use this chord scale chart to help us figure that out. And these chord scale charts are free if you wanna download them in the link below. So we've got the E minor chart up, and that's because we're going to E minor. And what's the five? What's the five of X? It's a B. Here's C major, B7, E minor. Oof. That is nice. Now this iteration of, of a secondary dominant chord is, is the most basic version. This is the basic B of secondary dominance. Yeah, basic. If you want to add a little variation, you can do something called the lucky seven. Well, let's go back to the C major going to E7 going to A minor, this one. Let's look at that E7 again. If I add a flat nine, if I add the F on top of that, and I take the E out, what chord are we left with? That's a G-sharp diminished seventh chord. And if we look at our A minor chord scale chart, which again, you can download for free in the description below, that chord right there, that G-sharp diminished seven, is the seven chord in the key of A minor, and it leads beautifully to A minor. It's called the lucky seven. Well, I call it the lucky seven because it's a fun way to remember it. And it's the seven chord. Instead of doing the five of X, now we have the seven of X. Same concept. We are adding a chord in to help us get from point A to point B. Instead of doing C major, E7, A minor, we do C major, G sharp, diminished seven, A minor. And of course you can do this going to any chord you want. This time we're gonna go from C major to F sharp minor. Now, going from C major to F sharp minor sounds pretty, it's, it's kind of hairy there. It's, it's not smooth, that's for sure. Those are two very different sounds. And this lucky seven chord is gonna help smooth out that transition. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what is the seven of the chord we're going to. The chord we're going to is F sharp minor. The seven is E sharp diminished seven. So it's gonna sound something like this. By the way, E sharp is like F natural. So that extra chord helped a lot in terms of smoothing the transition. So if you wanna modulate to another key or do some kind of awkward key change, these chords like the basic B, which is just five of X, or the lucky seven, which is seven of X, these chords can help smooth out the transitions and get you into that new key in a way that sounds much less abrupt and awkward. 
So let's go on to the next variation, which I call the sub sandwich. So I call this one the sub sandwich because we're doing a tritone sub. Let's work with that original chord progression where we went from C major to A minor. Okay, what's the tritone sub going to A minor? Well, here we're gonna go back to the basic B, which was the five of A minor, which was E7, this sound. Now we're gonna take the tritone sub for E7. So what's a tritone away from E7? B flat seven. Or we could voice it differently. Really nice passing chord. So another variation there. We've got the basic B, we've got the lucky seven, we've got the, the sub sandwich. And now the next one is one of my favorites and I call it, that guy is acting sus. It's not the catchiest name, but I wanted to work the word sus in there because what we're gonna use here is a suspended chord, specifically a 13 sus chord. Let's do another awkward modulation for this one. We'll go from C major to E major. The sus chord is sort of like a magic chord, which you can make any modulation sound smooth. Check it out. We're gonna do uh, the five of X again, but instead of a, of a seven or a dominant seventh chord, we're gonna do a sus chord, specifically a 13 sus chord. So we have C major going to E major seven. What is the five of X? What's the five of E? Look at the chart. It's a B, but we're not playing B seven. We're playing B seven sus. Actually, we're gonna play a B 13 sus. And an easier way to remember that chord is to play the root, which is B, and then a major seven chord starting a whole step below. So what's a whole step below B? It's an A, so I've got the B down there, and I'm gonna play A major seven on top. Really great sound, one of my favorite chords. And again, it's a magic chord. It's gonna help smooth any modulation out. Check this out. It's amazing how well that chord works. You can use it to get to any key, to any chord. The 13 sus chord, the that guy's acting sus chord works so, so well. This next one I call the one, two punch. Instead of just doing this, that's the basic B. Let's set up that five of X chord with a, a setup. We're gonna do the two of X. Remember, X in this case is where we're going. A minor, what's the two? B half diminished or B minor seven flat five. So you get this sound. It's essentially a minor two, five, one going to A minor. So that's the one, two punch. That first jab is the two chord, the two of X. And then you come back with that, uh, that five of X landing on your A minor. Okay, we've got one more variation and then I'm gonna kind of put them all together to get the combo platter. This one's called the reverse engineer and it's similar to the one, two punch. We're just gonna sequence a whole bunch of one, two punches together. You'll see what I mean. So we're gonna start on that C major and instead of doing the, the progression we just did, we're now going to think of that B minor seven flat five or that B half diminished chord as our, our new X. So we have to do that same process. What is the five of X? Right now X is gonna be B. So what's the five of B? F sharp seven. So we can do this. Let's take it even further. Remember, the reverse engineer, we're working backwards. So now let's do a one-two punch approaching that B. B is X, remember. So what is the two of X? The two of X, X is B. The two is gonna be C sharp minor seven flat five. Again, use the chord scale charts. So the two chord is gonna be a C sharp minor seven flat five going to some kind of an F sharp seven going to B half diminished, going to E7, going to A minor. Now we have a whole string of chords. And it sounds really, really cool if you want this dense harmonic sound with a lot of harmonic activity. Here it is uh, all together. So let's put them all together now for the combo platter. And we're gonna, we're gonna take the progression we just played and add a few more chords at the end to work in some of that other stuff like the basic B and the lucky seven and the sub sandwich and uh, even some of that guy that's acting a little sus. So uh, let's try it. <laughs> the 
there's a lot of harmony in there, but it's really cool sounding. Think about your target chords. Where are you going and how can you get there? Lots of different ways to do so. And if you want to dig into more of this stuff at a slower sort of step-by-step -step pace, you can check out my course, Chord Theory for R&B Piano. It's great for jazz too. And I dig into all of this, the voicings, the, the, the chord progressions, the reharmonization, analysis. It's all in there and I walk you through step-by-step. -step. So you can check that out also in the description below. But that's it for now. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.